Hi there, it's Richard again, sending our best wishes to the travel advisor community from all of us here at the Royal Caribbean Group. This COVID-19 crisis continues to throw all of us in the travel business for a loop. Our ships are shut down, theme parks are closed, hotels are empty, and most airplanes are still parked in the hangar. We are still working from home, and my family still says I can't go and get a haircut. It's all very depressing, although my wife says she likes my new longer hair better than my previous shorter style, so I got something going for me. Right about now, after two solid months of glooming news, I could use a shot of encouragement. I think we all could. And good news. If you've been watching and reading the coverage this week, some definitely encouraging signs are emerging in this terrible situation. We're not out of the woods yet, but some days you can really see the clearing ahead. Most importantly, the number of new cases is on the decline, and so is the number of fatalities quite quickly too. Isolating ourselves obviously helps contain the spread, but so does the panoply of other advances. Although hoping for a silver bullet is fun to think about, I still believe that the steady advances in so many smaller initiatives is what will lead us to the promised land. And this very week, there seem to be significant new developments which advance our understanding of this horrible virus, as well as help in the fight against it. It's wonderful to watch the steady increase in testing capabilities, which now seem to be running close to 400,000 tests a day. This huge increase, along with better contact tracing, offers real hope of changing the risk of a second wave to the likelihood of isolated pockets. On top of that, our medical professionals are really getting better at treating the disease. It appears that for those who contract the disease, the ability of our doctors and our hospitals to deal with it successfully keeps getting better. That's a really important element in this battle. And this week, the CDC estimated that the fatality rate for people who have COVID-19 and show symptoms is 0.4%. That is dramatically lower than the kind of estimates that have been publicly quoted up until now. And it's really very encouraging. The CDC also announced that while it may be possible that a person could get COVID-19 by touching an infected service, the main contagion is transmitted through close personal contact with an infected person, not contact with inanimate objects. Again, very encouraging news as it makes clearer the precautions that one can take. They also estimated that about one third of all cases are asymptomatic. That is, they don't have a fever or even realize that they're infected. This is important implications for the efforts to fight the virus. If a third of the people seem fine, but are still infecting others, that makes it harder to contain and makes social distancing and wearing a mask even more relevant. On the other hand, another implication is that the estimated fatality rate drops down. It drops to less than 0.3%. While we'd like it to be zero, a figure of 0.3% would make the fatality rate quite close to the rate for the common seasonal flu. So what does this mean for the travel and tourism industry and how do we plan for a healthy return to service? We're all anxious to get back to operating our cruises and returning, but we will not do so until we are confident that we can do so properly and with appropriate safeguards for our guests and our crew. To that end, we're working on a detailed set of protocols and procedures that can give us and your clients that level of confidence. I know that every day you are receiving messages from airlines, car companies, delivery services, car services, etc., telling you of their enhanced protocols to protect against COVID-19. Many of you have asked me why the cruise industry isn't doing the same. After all, you say, the cruise industry has a history of much stronger hygiene requirements than any of these other industries. Why aren't we touting our procedures now? The reason is simple. Unlike them, we aren't operating today, and therefore we have the luxury of time to develop and to refine our ideas. We have the time to put together a blue ribbon group of experts to advise us and to help us chart the absolutely best course. So stay tuned. 
We will soon be talking more about our way forward. And when we do, I believe, in fact, I'm confident that you will say that we have used our time wisely. It's also interesting to see the differences in different places around the world. While we are just beginning to even consider our opening our offices in Florida sometime next month, our offices in China have been open and operating for almost two months. We are slowly beginning to operate our society here in America, but our friends in continental Europe have been seeing significant opening up for several weeks already. A lot depends on when the pandemic started in the different geographical areas, but it also reflects the various demographics and the very different cultures in the different places. It is really painful to see our society suffering so much. The loss that this disease has caused so many direct victims, it's painful to bear. But so is the indirect pain that it has caused so many people who never got sick. People who have lost their jobs, people who have been confined under difficult circumstances, even people who will suffer because their non-COVID issues are not being treated. It's awful, but this too shall pass. It will leave an indelible mark on our country and on our psyche, but it will pass because we are stronger than this disease. We are determined to take the necessary steps to bring it under control and to live our lives again, just as we did after September 11th. We will come together and we will find practical solutions. I had one clear and I thought very encouraging indication of that the other day. Vicki Fried and Donda Ritzenthaler both hold regular sessions with travel agents. Last week, I was a guest on the Coffee Talk with Vicki Fried call. It was an interesting call, but I was amazed to learn that 5,600 travel advisors participated. 5,600 travel advisors took the time and the trouble to participate in this session to better prepare themselves for selling cruises. 5,600. That speaks volumes about your determination to defeat this disease and to sell more cruises. With that kind of focus, I feel totally confident about our ability to come back strong. By the way, not complaining, but I didn't even get a cup of coffee from Vicki. She was all talk and no coffee, just, just saying. So this horrible lockdown continues, but it is gradually ending and we will be there when it does. Continue doing what our governments tell us. Continue maintaining those relationships with your clients and continue working with us to prepare ourselves for a better and much more social future. We've made it this far. We can make it a little further. Onward and upward, step by step, together. Stay safe out there. Oh, and don't forget, washing your hands is still important. <laughs>